Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're talking about Alex Pereira. I think I'm saying that right, Pereira, Pereira, however it is. We're talking about him because we're approaching UFC 287. He's gonna be rematching Israel Adesanya, fourth time that they're gonna be fighting. Second time in MMA. And I wanna point out a couple really odd things about Pereira's style that just shock me that he can do this and still get away with being a champion. First things first, I'm not criticizing or trying to take away from everything Alex Pereira has accomplished. Obviously, super amazing champion, two-time glory champion, one weight class and then the other, moves into MMA very fast, becomes a fighter in the UFC who is well known because of his victory over Adesanya or his victories over Adesanya, and there's boom, 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 all of a sudden UFC champion. But I still wanna point out a couple things that he does which are very odd because number one, it shows you that even though we're taught to do things, a certain way. We're taught perfect technique. You can win fights at a very high level without perfect technique. And that is very interesting to note and something everybody out there should understand. Very often when I have students and they're doing something wrong, if it's working for them, I'll try and tweak it a little bit to make it a little safer, but I don't go, oh no, that's wrong. Don't do it. This mindset, I think, stifles people like Pereira who could be as good as he is, but if we try to make him perfect technique, it might actually lower his skills. So let's jump into three things he does which are technically wrong, but he makes work so well. Number one, even at a body level for round kicks, this dude, he doesn't pivot. He doesn't pivot whatever height he goes at. Maybe in the slightest, there's a little turn, but really his toes are facing towards his opponent. Now, keep in mind that normally when you are the shorter fighter, you're really trying to get your head off that center line so that they can't punch you. But Pereira is very often the taller dude, so he can almost get away with just keeping his head right here and smashing that kick in. But the power he gets behind everything is phenomenal, even though he's not pivoting. And pivoting is something that which are always taught. Open up the hips, create more power. It's gonna happen when you turn that foot on the floor. He doesn't do it, he still kicks super hard. If I saw him in a class, I'd be like, dude, pivot your foot. But that's if I didn't know him or didn't know who he was. I would never come over and correct him and be like, yeah, you're doing that wrong. Obviously it's working for him. And maybe some of you guys out there who are not pivoting, maybe it's working for you. The next thing which he does, which actually was instructed to me when I was in Thailand, is your cross, once you hit, it swings down. They wanted me to hit and roll it down, hit and roll it down. I think the idea was you're gonna hit somebody in the jaw and then instead of pulling back, you're gonna thud it downwards, which is the impact they were saying was greater. Now, obviously the downside of that is once you hit here and you go down, you're very, very open to a left hook counter. If somebody blocks and they come back with that left hook or blocks left hook, very dangerous, but it works for Pereira and it seems to give him loads of power. Just crash down, crash down. Down. Yeah, it's not the way I would teach somebody, but again, he's pulling it off. Would I advise people on the channel to throw their cross like that? No, absolutely not. But again, I wouldn't go over and correct this dude, aside from maybe mention, you know that you're open for the left hook, and he goes, yeah, obviously I know that, and I go, okay. The final odd thing that I wanna mention is this dude does not guard his head when he's comboing up. Usually, or especially for myself, I go, this hand's punching, the other hand is tight to the head. I'm trying to minimize damage, minimize opening so I don't get countered, but he punches from down here, and somehow he makes it work. Yes, his head movement is a little bit better, and sometimes he punches as he moves. He also has long arms so that it's harder for people to reach him, but overall, it's just one of those things like Manny Pacquiao, when you see him throw, a lot of times it's from down here, but he's just so fast. Well, I think Pereira just hits so hard. He doesn't really care if he's in the middle of throwing and somebody hits him because he's gonna hit them back and he's gonna win that exchange because of it. Going into UFC 287, I already have a video up about what I believe Israel Adesanya needs to do to defeat Pereira going into their fourth fight where he has never beat him. He's never got the victory. That's 
big risk. Like very, very brave of Adesanya to step back in and take an immediate rematch with Alex Pereira, who is just a beast in terms of power and all that. So you guys can check that video out. Overall, I just wanted to use this today to show you there are right way to do things, but sometimes the wrong ways work for certain people. And Pereira is one of those perfect examples. Who do you think is gonna take the win this weekend, guys? Adesanya or Pereira, drop it down below there. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel, get subscribed. Train hard, guys. I'll see you back here soon for another episode.